Hello again. It's time for another another video. Hello again. It's time for another vlog. I had this up yesterday, except I uploaded it and I got the video and the audio all unsynced, so that sucked. But this time I want to talk about something that's a little bit more specific to my personal interest and experience and skill set, which might, I haven't seen discussed quite as much in the author's community, which might potentially be very beneficial. So I'm going to share my personal experience, and it revolves around the correlation between acting and writing. I've mentioned here and there that I'm involved heavily in theater in addition to my writing, and... I actually went to college for it partially. I minored in writing, theater, and reading. I had a triple minor. And I hadn't realized at the time when I was taking them just how well they corresponded to each other. I had kind of always just thought they were things that all interested me, but there's actually a lot of overlap between them. Obviously, there's a certain amount of overlap between plays as literature and reading because obviously you can't really get through a, a course on reading without picking up a play at some point. But also there's a correspondence to the way a writer creates a character in a story and the way an actor creates a character for a play. Right now, I'm actually in a play. Come to think of it, I'm, it's opening tonight. It's William Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. I play Sir Toby Bilch, the constantly drunk, perpetually mischievous Sir Toby Bilch. It's good. It's fun. He's drunk most of the time, and it's great. If you live in Northeast Ohio, you should come see it. Um, but I, I wanted to specifically talk about the way that character creation, from my standpoint as an actor, correlates with the way I create characters in my writing. Basically, when you're creating a character for the stage, you take the the technical aspect of your character which would be the lines and the story of the play and where your character fits in that because you have to go with the lines you have as an actor you can't just make stuff up on the spot unless it happens to be some kind of a play where you can improv a lot of stuff but your ultimate goal as a character should be to serve the story rather than yourself, if you're any good and not just a showboater. So the way you define your character should center around the need of the show. And obviously, the director has a big say in that too. So you listen to the director. But a lot of it is still up to you as an individual actor, and a lot of it is up to your specific interpretation of the script. You can look at the script and say, well... These are the things my character says. These are the things my character says he wants to do, or he's going to do, or these are the things he says has happened to him before. And you take that, that's information, that's solid information that you can use to build a bigger framework of what your character's like. But most of what you, you're going to do as you create a character happens behind the scenes. You're thinking about your character's origins. What kind of environment do they come from? Where have they been? What's happened to them in the past? What do they do when they're not on stage? Where are they trying to end up by the end of the show and beyond? That's all stuff that isn't in the script necessarily. It might be informed by the script. You might have references to a childhood or references to an outside life and things like that. And you use those. You expand on them. 
the audience isn't going to see it. They're not going to know necessarily what you've created in your head for this character, but they will notice the consistency of your portrayal of your character. Your actual thoughts of how this character exists outside the stage aren't going to show up. The audience will only see what happens on the stage, but they'll notice you're acting consistently. A poor actor would go only by what's with, what, what's in the script. We'll pay no attention to characterization outside of that. They will, their motivation in one scene will be to achieve the specific objective of that scene. It might not even correlate to the other scenes they have. They're treating it in chunks of this is this performance, this is that performance, this is that performance, and they're not linking them together and they're not trying to create an overall character line. And that's poor because the audience will see that. They'll pick up on it. They might not be able to put a finger on exactly what they think is off about it, but they'll notice something is off because your character is not acting like a person would. Because a person doesn't exist in just a series of scenes. Different things will happen to a person throughout their day. Like, I woke up this morning and I ate some food and then I sat down and and started doing computer stuff, and then I got into my Sir Toby costume for my vlog, and then I started recording my vlog, and that's been my day so far. That's a series of scenes. But I didn't just stop being me in between those scenes and then start being a different version of me for that next scene. I, it was a consistent flow, and each scene of my day bled into the next one flawlessly, fluidly, because that's how people work, and that's how your character should work. Your goal as an actor should be to create a person, and the more effectively you create that person, the more fleshed out that person is, the more that person feels like a person, the better you're doing as an actor. It doesn't matter what kind of character you're playing. The audience wants to see that character come alive, and the only way it comes alive is if it, it seems true to a character. Now that translates to a uh, author's perspective when it comes to creating characters and that they're doing the same thing. An author's goal who's writing fictional characters should be to imbue those characters with life and personality and individuality and make them feel real, make them feel true, make them feel like people doesn't matter what kind of story you're writing. If you're writing a realistic fiction story that takes place in, in our world with our rules and, and is supposed to embody real people in our world, obviously it's got to seem like real people in that world. If you're doing a completely fictional story, like a high sci-fi story or a high fantasy story where it doesn't even necessarily take place in our universe, it doesn't necessarily follow our own rules. Maybe it's a high fantasy story with magic and, and dragons and, and elves and all kinds of fantasy constructs that don't exist and couldn't exist in our real world. It doesn't matter. It's not so much that a thing has to be real as it has to be true. And that is the characters that you introduce in these worlds, these fictional worlds, have to be internally consistent and they have to act the way a person would in that world. They have to be true. Like Maybe your character is an immortal elf who's lived for thousands of years and will live for thousands of years. Maybe they can even die. Maybe they can only die if they're slain in battle. Then that's cool. That's great. You can do that they'll have a different perspective on mortality than we do because we can die we will die we the idea that we can die is something that's present in our minds it's present in our social consciousness and it will be for them as well but they'll have a different idea so that's something you need to think of that's a part of where that character comes from and it's something that you need to include in your ingredients when you're creating this character but they won't just disregard death the fact that they're immortal and can't die won't make them just not even think about death. That's not something that's going to be part of them. They're going to think about it just differently based on the experience they have. So that's something you need to think of. And you can't have your characters, no matter what you're doing, 
you shouldn't have your characters be just versions of you because that's boring to read like you draw upon your own personal experience like if you have a, a character who's experienced the death of a loved one and you've experienced the loss of a loved one you can draw upon that experience that memory of how it felt to have that loved one die and you can imbue your character with that to make it feel true and that's good that's an effective way to do that but remember your character should still not be you the loss of your loved one may not be the same experience for them as it is as it was for you like having your grandmother die in the hospital won't be the same exact experience as having your wife and child killed in a house fire by barbarians or something like that you'll feel similar aspects of it the sense of loss the sense of this person who is so dear to me is no longer in my life and the confusion of how do I go on in in my life now that this person is not in it that'll still be there but the feelings of letting go of of the expectation of loss versus the non-expectation of the loss those will be different same goes for like romantic connections with characters like you can draw upon your own personal experience or lack of experience in ro romantic relationships to inspire the way your characters experience their romantic attractions with one another but it should still be different it should still speak to the individual experience of the characters you're writing or acting as And this goes beyond just characters. This also translates into the worlds themselves. If you're creating a fictional world, like a wholly fictional world that exists separate from ours or some parallel version of ours, you need to think about that world as a character. There, you have to think about where did this world come from? What, what's this world's ancient history like? Did it arise out of some kind of a cataclysm was there a series of wars or natural disasters? Were, were there supernatural beings reigning upon the world and, and doing things with it? Uh, you have to think about civilizations rising and falling and how that changes the way the, the world's natural state is over time. And those individual civilizations, you can think of them as characters as well. They're groups of like-minded individuals who are joined by common purpose or need or philosophy, they'll act consistently within themselves like a person would based on the actions of the rulers or of the public at large, depending on what kind of a culture it is. Basically anything that has a, has a growth over time, you can treat it like a character, and you should. Worlds should experience character development. Civilizations could should cons involve character development over time. A lot of it might, it it'll happen slow slower. It'll happen slower than it would for a character because obviously everything will move slower when it's on a, a more massive scale. Uh, it takes a lot longer for a country to change its mind about something than it would for a person but it's still going to happen it might not happen within the course of your own story and you shouldn't feel a need to cram all of your expositionary concepts into into writing that's a big failing for a lot of especially high fantasy writers they try and put too much lore into their content and it becomes inaccessible you can't all be tolkien i'm sorry It'd be great if you could be, but you can't be. And maybe you want to choose to release extra material at some point to, to show the world building you did. Maybe you want to keep it just your, to you. Maybe you want to introduce it over a series of books. That's all right. That's good. But you, you want to make sure your story doesn't 
suffer from including too much of your backstory. The other thing that's important in regards to characters specifically, but also to the other stuff I've been talking about, you want to make sure you're steering away from stereotypes because stereotypes suck just in general. They're awful. They just don't do it. Like you can have archetypes. Archetypes and stereotypes are not the same thing. You can have characters that fit a certain kind of role. They They might be the romantic lead, or the comedic relief, or the strong warrior type, or the aloof politician, or things like that. Those are archetypes. You can do stuff with those. But you should still make them individuals. Because, I hate to break it to you, because this might be news to some of you, but there are no stereotypes in real life. None. Even that one person who you're thinking of who's like, that person's just such a stereotypical blah, 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 blah. That person's still a person. Sorry to tell you this, but they still have specific aspects of their personality and backstory and life that don't mesh with your box that you're putting them in. Those kinds of people exist only in your brain and if you lump people into stereotypes, you're wrong, and you suck a little bit. So when you're writing or acting, you shouldn't fall into characters that just follow the specific mold that are always the same kind of character. You know the kinds I'm talking about. Your character should be individualized. Their experience should be tailored to fit their own role in the story, the kind of world they're living in, and the ways that a person would act in that environment with all those factors. So please stay away from stereotypes. I'm so sick of reading them and seeing them and them just being a thing because they shouldn't be. It's it's lazy to act with a stereotype. It's lazy to write with a stereotype. It's lazy to conceive of people as stereotypes. Just put some effort into it and think of people as people. Soapbox dismounted. bottom line that I wanted to take away from this is create worlds, create characters that are internally consistent, that are true, that fill the role they need to to tell a good story, create a backstory for them in your head. You can be as detailed or as non-detailed as you want to, but generally speaking, the more you think something through like this, the more effective your telling of this character or this world will be. and keep populating your stories and your worlds with people rather than simply characters.